Today we're gonna to be making a mild sourdough bread. I'll be using my starter. If you are interested in learning how I made my starter, I'll put a link to the video in the description. Once you have your starter made and you've been feeding it on a regular basis, you can start making bread. So this will be just to show you my process and I change it up sometime. There's lots of ways to bake bread. So this is just one way that I'm showing you. Okay, so with all that said, let's get into baking this loaf of bread. It has been, I would say, maybe four, almost five hours. And as you can see, it's mounded up like a dome and it has more than doubled in size. So we're ready to mix the bread. I'm gonna put the scale on and get that tarred to zero. And I'll put my pan on there and tar it again, so make sure everything's zero. I've got a little recipe book I keep some notes in. We're going to put 300 grams of flour, 120 grams of my starter, 195 grams of water, seven grams of salt. Okay, so I'm gonna to wanna to weigh this as I'm pouring this in. I'm gonna just, and you can see the texture. It's very, it has a lot of, it looks stringy inside, which is really good. So I'm gonna to wanna to put 120 grams in this bowl. So that's 55. And you do want to try to be as precise as you can with this. So that's 125. Let me just take out a little bit. I'm going to call up. Oh, I got it. 120. Yay. All right. That's all I need to do with the starter right now is go ahead and cover that. So I'll just leave it right here. And I'm going to put my bread flour in next. So this will be, and I'm going to tar it again to zero. I don't think you can see that part of the zero, but anyway, it says zero here. All right, so we're going to put in 300 grams of flour. And this is that same organic bread flour. You can just use the regular bread flour. All right, we're all 270. And it really is important to tar this every time and zero it out because you will get confused. Did I zero it before I put the flour in or did I not? We do it every time. Okay, so that's that. Now we need 195 grams of water. I will tar this again to zero and I will put in 195 grams of water. Take your time with the water because it's easy to go over and then you're gonna be like, okay, now I gotta add more flour and then a little more starter, so it's a real pain. Okay, 196, that's good enough for me. And then I'm gonna need seven grams of, I keep my sea salt in a little jam jar that I've got, and I use sea salt, I think it's from the Mediterranean. I use this little brand of fine sea salt. I will just zero this out again. And I'm gonna start just putting in some salt on one side. If you notice here, I'm gonna just put the salt right over here where the flour is. Now it says two grams. Five, and that's, there you go, that's seven. Okay, so we've got that done, and that's all we have to do. And I just kind of mix the salt in really with the flour and before it actually starts to get in contact with the starter. Starter's way down on the bottom. Okay, so we got that done. Now we're ready to take the dough, whatever they call it, a dough. We don't need the scale anymore. You take that away. And then you just go around here like this. This thing makes it really easy to mix this. It really does. Because the dough goes through it. And we get this all mixed up and you can see the consistency. You're gonna think it's too dry, but it isn't made. It's gonna be just perfect. And you keep mixing. You definitely wanna get everything off the bottom because that's where the starter was and get that mixed in. Okay, so. Get this off, there we go. Yep, that's good. 
There you go. Okay. What we're going to do now is I usually just get this in a bowl and then I let it rest in the other bowl. I don't need the flour anymore. I don't need the salt or this or this. Let's get everything out of the way. We don't need this. Okay. This is my little bowl and I'm just going to set that right over here. And I've got my hands wet and I'm just going to grab this dough and mash it down into the bowl and just try to get the whole thing in a bowl just like you were making like pie crust and that's really all we need to do you can see the consistency of this i'm just going to get it in a bowl just like this and just get it in the shape of a bowl and that's all we want to do right this second and we're going to just put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom and I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna run it all around the bowl inside. Okay, just like that. You can use any kind of olive oil that you want. I just used extra virgin olive oil. And then I'm gonna leave it on my hands, pick up the dough, just go like this. I'm gonna put this bowl aside. We're gonna get this bowl. And I'm just gonna lay it in here, roll it around a little bit, flip it over, get it coated, and that's it. That's all we're gonna do right now. We're gonna let this sit for 10 minutes and then we'll be back. Okay, we are at the next step. So it's been sitting in here for 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up. You can already see that it has some tension in it, which is really good. It, it still, it will fall apart. And if you see it breaking, well then, you know, we're not anywhere near ready yet. So I'm just gonna roll this up and I'm gonna do just one little pull and I'll fold it over. This very first time, there's not much you can really do for it. And like I said, it is sticky. So you can see it's gonna be a little sticky. All right, that's all I'm gonna do for right now. I'm gonna leave it in here for 10 more minutes and we'll be back. 10 more minutes have gone by, I'm gonna take this out. This time I'm going to just give it a good pull. Let it just drop down, slap it down, fold it over, pick it up again, just let it just drop, slap it down, fold it over. This is what they just call stretch and fold. So this is how I do it anyway. So it works for me. Do this about, I don't know, four or five times. Just, just do that a couple of times. Slap it down, roll it over. You're just trying to build up some, some tension in it. Later, we're gonna be doing with this pulling and rolling. So I'm going to just roll that up, get it in a ball again, and it's already starting to get some good tension in it. You notice it's not nearly as sticky anymore. So this is just the, the factor of time. As it starts to build up its gluten, it'll just start doing this all on its own. Okay, that's all I'm going to do for this thing. I'm going to now wait about 15 minutes, and then I'll come back and do the exact same thing again. Okay, 15 minutes have gone by. We're gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna give it a little pull and shake. You can see it's starting to get a little more pliable. It's good. There you go. You just give it a good stretch out now. Start doing some things like this. Lay it out, get it in four corners and then just fold it over, fold this one over, fold this one, pull it and fold it over. And then take this, just give it a pull, fold it over, and I'll just kind of give this a good little pull. And you can see it's really building up some good tension now. Yep. I'll do one more stretch and fold. Yeah, it's not ready yet because you can see how it's breaking apart. If you hold it up and let it hang and you start getting like little holes in it, like this, 
We're almost there, but you see these tears? You don't want that. So it just needs to be stretch and fold a little bit more. Give it a good little pull. Yep, just like that. Okay, and I'm gonna let it sit in here for another 15 minutes with a little of soak up the rest of this olive oil. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna let it rest for another 15 minutes and come back and do the same thing. Okay, we're back after another 15 minutes. So, let's check it out. Oh yeah, look at, see, it's becoming much more more like one piece. It's not breaking apart so easy. You could almost like shape it out to be a pizza pie, which is great. See, it's got that, it's kind of holding itself and it's not breaking. Okay, so you can see, you can almost see through it, right? That's kind of where you want to get to that point. I think I'll do one more stretch and fold and uh, we should be ready to go after that. So do this, fold it over, fold that over, pull this, fold this, fold this. Oh yeah, this is great. It's, we're good. I'm gonna go ahead, put it back in here, and we're gonna leave it for a couple hours and let it double in size now. I'll be back after that. Okay, checking things an hour later, and it's starting to get a little bit bigger. What I'm gonna do though is, I'm gonna put this in the oven and just put the light on in the oven because it's a little cold today. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this in here. The oven is off, but I'm gonna put the oven light on and I'm just gonna leave that in there for at least an hour or two. I'll check on it in an hour. Okay, this is what it looks like after about an hour. And I'm going to leave it in again for another hour and let it fully double up in size. It's been a few hours and I am positive it's ready. You can have a look and see it's completely doubled in size. Let's take it over to the counter. We're over at the counter, and I just thought you can see what this looks like. What I'm gonna do now is, I'm just gonna dump it out here on the counter, and I just let it drop on its own. There it goes. Okay, good. And you can see how nice and gluteny it is. <laughs> so. I, I don't really need any flour yet. What I usually do is just, I just wet my hands just a little bit and just pick it up. And you can see, look how beautiful this is. Look at it. It's just lovely. I'm just gonna fold it over. Take it like this and I fold this over. And I'm just gonna pull it. And you can see, look at all the bubbles on here. Like, there's just little bubbles. This is perfect. So we're gonna roll it, get all the bubbles out, and kind of deflate it. I'm gonna just keep turning it, and then just run your fingers underneath, and just make it into a ball. And you're gonna notice there's just bubbles all the time. They'll just be happy, happy dough. I'm just gonna let it rest for just a couple of minutes, just like that, and then we'll finish it up. Okay, when I turn it over, you'll notice that it's, it wants to break open again because of folding it over. So I wanna get this to be where it's just completely nice and smooth all the way around. I really don't wanna add any flour to it. It 
just want to keep working it until this is nice and smooth. I'm going to pinch it up a little bit just to close up those seams. I might use just a little bit of flour just to dust it right now. Just a little bit. Okay, I've got my basket and I'm gonna take some rice flour and just put it in here and just dust it. Just dust it real gentle. There you go. Just to coat the bottom a little bit. And then we're gonna pick this up. I'm gonna lay it in here. And just kind of tuck it in. And then we're gonna sprinkle the top and close this. And I'm gonna put this in the baggie and it's gonna go back in the oven with the oven off and just the light on. And we're gonna leave it in there until it rises, probably about 40 minutes or so. Okay, we are ready and it looks really good. You can see it's nice and rounded on the top and it's not doubled in size, but this is just perfect. If you touch it and it stays indented, nice slow bounce back. If you're interested in learning about the tools I'm using for baking my bread, I will put a link in the description to a video that will go over everything that I use here. Get this and just gently flip it over so you get the nice little ridges on the top. And I'm just gonna lay it here in my pan and really try not to disturb it. Like just, I don't wanna deflate it. I'm gonna take my little razor and I think I'll just come over here and just do one cut, just there on the side. I'm gonna cover this. It's gonna go in the oven. The oven is set at 465 and it's gonna go in for 20 minutes. Okay, here we go. Twenty minutes and then we'll lower the temperature to 425. Twenty minutes have gone by and we're gonna do the reveal. Okay, let's see how this has come out. Oh wow, that really rose nice. Let's get that out of the way. And let me get this. Let's see if I can get this guy out and get him laid there. Okay, I did it, yay. Okay, I'm just gonna let him stay right in there and cook at 425 for about another 10 minutes. Okay, we've got 10 minutes passed by and it looks golden brown and I think it's done. I don't wanna overcook the bottom. It looks nice crispy. Yep, that's perfect. So there you go. We've got a little dark there, but not bad at all. And we've got a really beautiful crust on this one. So this turned out real nice. We've got our bread. So now I will leave this out overnight. That's probably the best way to do it. And slice it in the morning so you can see the inside. Okay, I'm just going to leave it on this rack to cool overnight. No need to cover it. It'll get a nice crust on it. Uh, as long as you don't cut it, you can leave it overnight. And it'll be perfect in the morning. Actually, it'd be perfect in about an hour, but it's too late already tonight for me to be eating more bread. <laughs> okay, good morning. The bread has been sitting out on the counter overnight. I'm gonna bring my cutting board back. We've got the bread and let's go ahead and slice it. And it's nice and light, which is always a good sign. That means that it won't be too dense inside. It 
It looks just perfect. Nice and light and good crispy crust. It looks good. And then I'll just take my little baggie or my bowl cover and I just put this on the end and it just stays like that on the counter. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. There'll be lots more coming in the garden and in here in the kitchen and I will see you in the next one.